Let me just uh, let me just start off by um, saying welcome everyone. Uh, good afternoon and happy Earth Day. It's our 50th Earth Day uh, celebration, and uh, we're thrilled you could join us. Um, join us to celebrate. So thank you for being here. I'm Todd Samsel with the Friends of Virgin Islands National Park. Um, and in a minute, I'll introduce our speaker, even though I think you all were invited by her, so uh, you know her better than I do. But um, I first want to recognize um, and thank our sponsors for our Earth Day event. Uh, everybody had hoped we could uh, host everybody here in person. Um, unfortunately, that isn't working out. So we're thrilled that they're helping us um, and supporting us uh, to do it virtually. But our sponsors include Island Green Living Association, the Virgin Islands Waste Management Authority, the U.S. Virgin Islands uh, Department of Tourism, and of course our Virgin Islands National Park. And so uh, the Virgin Islands and here on St. John, we're blessed to have our Virgin Islands National Park and um, we're working hard with our partners and with our staff at the National Park Service to make sure that uh, when you all can visit, uh, the park is ready. Um, and so we look forward to that day. Just a bit of housekeeping. Um, while there's a presentation, if everyone could stay muted, um, and then we'll have time for Q&A. If you have a question, you wanna type it in chat, that's fine. Um, and quick disclaimer, we are recording these presentations um, so that we can uh, provide those for uh, classes and we'll make them available on our website. So if you don't wanna be on video, feel free to shut your video off. Otherwise, we'll assume you're giving us permission to show your smiling faces uh, to everybody who wants to watch uh, later on. So this is our uh, final seminar of the day. Certainly, last but not least, uh, our VI VOAD, uh, Active and Determined. And our, um, we're really thrilled to have a community leader here in St. John, Celia Kalusik, um, leading our seminar. And I know she's invited uh, several colleagues from around the Virgin Islands, and, and I'm sure you can introduce folks uh, as, you're, as you're doing your presentation, Celia, but thank you for being here, and I will turn the screen share over to you um, so that you can start. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. And what I'm going to do, let me go backwards. There we go. Start at the very beginning. Um, if, I, if, if we could, I would love to be able to start by having whoever's on the line to say, say hi, because um, I can't do the screen share and see the people at the same time. So, um, um, yeah, I would love to. I, I saw everybody at the first. Maybe Jennifer can help me do that. Let's see. No? What do you want me to do? Um, no, I just wanted to, I see, uh, Todd, thank you again for, for doing Earth Day like this. I know it's kind of a awkward, awkward situation the way it is now and the whole COVID, COVID situation, but I think, I think people are getting used to doing the Zoom things, which is kind of nice. Um, and Jennifer, you as a support person for Friends of the National Park and for, for St. John Rotary as well, you're, you're, you're an welcome. asset. Thank you. Thank you. And I see Dee from Dee and Anna from Community Foundation of the Virgin Islands. They are big supporters of just about everything that we do. And um, Esprit, that's a, a, um, Ebony, is somebody that I wanted to point out as well. She is a FEMA VAL, which is a voluntary organization or voluntary agency liaison. Hey, hey, Ebony. Um, and Dr. Celia, who is big on the youth task force and who has been involved in the youth services and social services thing for a really long time. BJ, who is Rotary, and I don't know if we have been able to get her in. As, oh, there I see your picture with her funny hat on. There you go, Beach. <laughs> She's on her iPhone. There you go. Yay! And then DJ, who is one of my favorite case managers and social service providers. She's an amazing woman. And Michael, it would, I, I, I don't think I know you, do I? And give me a little background on who you are and what made you want to join us today. And you are on mute. Just unmute yourself. I got you. There you go. <laughs> we don't read lips. We don't have sound uh -oh. from Michael. 
No sound for Michael. Okay, no worries. Okay. Well, welcome. And maybe by the time we get through this, we'll figure it out. <laughs> and yeah, okay. And who else is on the call? I see a phone number 6365. Well, we will, once we figure this all out, I'm gonna go straight to the presentation and I'm gonna buzz through it and we'll have a chance for question and answer on the other end of it and um, get give everybody a chance to either um, tell me what they're doing as far as Earth Day and or in preparation for hurricane season or in response to the COVID. So until then, I'm gonna reduce everybody and Todd, if you see, um, any questions that come up in the chat that I need to kind of be aware of, let me know. Yep. Um, again, thank you for the opportunity to, um, to present VIVOAD to you guys. Um, what I found really kind of exciting was that Earth Day is celebrating its 50th anniversary and so is VIVOAD. And for those of you that do not know what VIVOAD is, I am going to, there we go. VIVOAD actually stands for Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster. And what I liked about my title was I put it active, actively determined. Um, so when we're not dealing with a disaster, we're always determined, determined about preparing for a disaster. And the overall scope of um, VOAD is we are a support services agency. And basically, we fill gaps, identify needs and fill gaps and help the governmental agencies do what they're supposed to do within the community during a disaster. Um, whoops, let me go back because VOAD is a um, yeah, yeah, voluntary you organization. Are you sharing? Yeah, the is it not? No. Does, yeah. Do you not, you don't see it? No. Uh-oh. Well, let me go back and. You gotta share your screen. I did, I did click share and it's, um, but let me, see where this is and it says share screen and there, there you how's go. that there you go, there you go. Oh, there you good go. good 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 okay so now i will move this down and i will go back to the beginning okay there we go so earth day 50 year celebration both for vi voad and for earth day um back in the 70s earth day started um and vi voad same, I'll get to that, but VIVOAD, first of all, stands for Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster, and each of the islands will have their own POAD, because as you know, each of the islands will have to have a separate plan because we are so unique, and so we'll have the St. Croix, St. Croix COAD, which is Community Organizations Active in Disaster, we'll have the St. John COAD, and we'll have the St. Thomas Water Island COAD. And those organizations or those little groups are made up of not only nonprofits, but also faith-based work, um, faith-based organizations, as well as governmental and individuals. We want anybody and everybody who can join to join. Because even if you're not affiliated with a nonprofit, we can determine and, and kind of interview you and see what your skills and interests are. And then we can affiliate you with an organization. And I'll show you some of those organizations further as we go. Um, and again, kudos to you, Friends of the National Park, for doing this in a um, digital format so we can continue to do what we do as far as um, cooperating and communicating and coordinating and collaborating, which is kind of the whole gist behind and the four key principles of BOAD. Um, what BOAD in, or what Earth Day, the first Earth Day was in 1970, and it launched a whole bunch of uh, initiatives and led to the creation of the EPA, just like National VOAD was formed in the 70s in response to a hurricane in Texas when all of the response organizations were coming together and it was kind of haphazard. Um, there were duplication of services in some areas and people were getting dropped through the cracks in other areas. So they formed VOAD and all of the nonprofits and service organizations were to go through one kind of funnel and then FEMA looked at that and said, or the government looked at that and said, well, we need that for all our federal agencies. And they formed FEMA. So not many people know that VOAD stands for FEMA, but now FEMA is our biggest partner and our biggest guiding factor and kind of helps us through by TEMA and then the governmental organization. Um, 
we'll go through. Um, so every day, well, and I know if Jay is able to get on the line or Imani is able to get on the line, they're with our St. Croix and our St. Thomas OS. And there are meetings, several meetings, and Dee from Community Foundation of the Virgin Islands can attest that there are several meetings um, on a daily basis that we go to so we can get the information to pass the information back to you. Um, some of the, this is, I'm gonna show a couple of the screenshots from our meeting that's called, it's called the Emergency Support Center. Um, yes, and what they do every morning is here's a list of the people that, that come to this meeting and share and report out what they're doing. Um, what they call the emergency support functions, they have different roles and responsibilities. During a hurricane, the ESF-6, which is led by the Department of Human Services, they coordinate everybody and BOAD reports to and checks in with Department of Human Services and says, how can we help you? How can we help you with mass feeding? How can we help you with sheltering? And now with COAD, um, or I mean, with the, the COVID-19, Department of Health is the lead. And so now they're kind of calling the shots and we're, we're a support agency for them. Um, for instance, they need a bed at the, the um, clinic. So emergency um, EMS folks can sleep there if they need to. And so we're getting that from St. Thomas multi-agency warehouse, bringing it over here and, and Ali will set it up. So this, it's a lot of stuff going, but as long as we funnel it down through the right channels, it's pretty well organized. And at this meeting every day, they come up with different, they call it the common operating picture. And every day they give us how many people have been tested, how many people are negative, how many people are positive, how many people are pending. And we have different um, response measures and the things that they're trying to make sure that they're do, doing. Um, their first priority obviously is preventing and mitigating transmission of the disease. Um, when they say conduct surveillance, they've got BICD that says, okay, now we are going through and we're busting up crowds of people more than five. We're shutting people down if they don't pay attention. Um, the provide public health and health and safety messaging. You, it, there's a multitude of radio shows going on. And again, the meetings and then the governor's updates three times a week. So there's a lot of information going out there and we just kind of try to funnel it. Um, Department of Health is providing mental or medical guidance and they are relying on the World Health Organization and CDC and Department of Health and other resources. And they're also doing the lab testing and coordinating what they call medical surge capacity. And with that, we're having help with the National Guard, with um, Army Corps of Engineers, and they're actually building some sites where in case there is a surge, and maybe I should just say when there is a surge and our hospitals that can't hold everybody that needs to be treated, they're going to have some facilities that will cover that. So we should, um, we're, I think we're in a better position now than we were a couple of weeks ago. And I think we're gonna be getting in a better position as well. And I think Dee can also talk to that as well. Um, some of the other things and, and um, information that they share. And one of the things they try to, they kind of drive home every day is just what we can do as BOAD members is relay accurate numbers and details and just make sure that there aren't, you know, kind of play rumor control and make sure that, you know, we don't start a panic, but at the same time, we maintain the seriousness of the governor's orders. So some of these, some of this information kind of helps drive that home. Um, they also give the islands by, um, or give the cases and their location by island. So you can kind of see where the cases are. You can also see if there's a, um, a, a change in how they've been transmitted, whether it's community transmitted, which is the worst because we don't want it out there. Close contact, if we can at least mitigate that. Travel, we can check people coming in at the airports, which they're, they're starting with the temperature according to the Port Authority today, I think. And then there's, um, there's other, there are other things that are shared at these meetings that, that we put out there when we can. Um, before the Q&A and before I, I open it up to other people, I just wanted to give a brief overview of BOAD's mission and how it got started. And I gave a little hint to it before, and it's basically the mission 
is to eliminate duplication and provide effective resource coordination. And when I say resources, I mean money, materials, manpower, and that's throughout the disaster the cycle. And when I say disaster, it's not just weather hazards. It's you know something like this, the pandemic. It's also um, you know if there's ever, God forbid, you know shootings or uh, it's called all hazards. So the the main premise is the four C's. Um, the guiding principles, which is cooperation, communication, coordination, and collaboration. And what I'm really excited about now is that we are doing this on a territorial level. Um, St. Corey, St. Thomas, and St. John's, and Water Island, we get together on a weekly basis just to talk COAD and VOAD. And as I said before, we get together on a daily basis and just make sure that we're all on the same page with information. Um, National VOAD is a coalition of over 50 organizations, and, and I know we've heard of all of them. After the hurricane, Irma and Malia, we had um, All Hands, All Hearts, we had Salvation Army, we had DIRT, we had um, all sorts of other organizations that came in, both governmental, non-governmental, corporate partners who helped with airlines. So I'm just going to flash through some of these, but what's important to note is that each of the states has a VOAD. Um, and now we are, we formed ours in 2014 and then lost touch with National while we were doing our thing. So we had to get back into good standing, which we are now, and um, we are recognized as one of the states. And, um, and like I said, even in, throughout those states, like New York has like 15 to 30 um, co-ads within their neighborhood. So um, I'll just flash through some of the logos as far as, and some of them you'll remember and you'll see. Um, American Red Cross Catholic Charity. Some of these are on a local level and some of these are on a national level. Um, Red Cross we, and Catholic Charities, we have both locally and nationally. And when we're on our calls on, there's a COVID call that FEMA has organized every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And we have some of these people reporting out, Save the Children reports out, American Red Cross reports out. Um, and they kind of say what they're doing on a national level which helps us because some of these folks are now responding to disasters, you know, the tornadoes and the flooding and, and, and things that are going on now. And they're having to do this with the COVID restrictions in place. So they're laying the groundwork on how we're gonna be able to do this and give us some hints come hurricane season because we're still gonna be under these COVID restrictions and we're gonna have to learn how to do sheltering and mass feeding all within the social distancing parameters. But uh, they're the faith-based um, organizations are um, are kind of funneled down to through the local churches. And so they've been just a really good source of, of help and assistance. UMCOR was really big in providing volunteers. And as I mentioned, Save the Children and Dr. Victor had some of the Save the Children folks on her youth children in these task force that UVI is kind of working, she's working with UVI on right now that I shout out to St. Thomas um, long-term recovery team. You know, they had a youth had a youth focused task group that is now turned into that, that children's and youth task force. So it's, everybody's working together and they were kind of figuring out and getting our legs and it's working out really well. Um, so basically, yeah, your, your mic's in and out. If you can yeah. stay, stay closer to your mic. Okay. It was getting okay. worse there. Okay. Sorry about that. I get, I, I, I get think it's connection. And I get, get, get us in work mode. Okay. Um, basically, VOAD itself doesn't provide the services. What we do is we provide the link to the service organizations that are on the ground that provide those services. We are a link to the doers, and we are a facilitator to make sure that there aren't duplication of services and that nobody is getting dropped through the cracks. And um, again, I've just got, I can flip through these kind of fast. We all know what coordination is, but what we want to make sure of is that we get everybody that we can um, connected to VOAD. So you all get the messages and you all get the um, information that we, that we want you to have so, so greatly. Um, cooperation, same kind of thing. No one organization or one person has all the answers and nor do they know how to do anything. And what we, I think we as a territory are really good at is making sure that all the people are at the table or as many of the people are at the table as possible because we together we can usually come up with an answer or a solution whereas if you're working on your own and in your own little bubble there's no way you can. 
um, communication, and again, it's all about making sure that we get the right message out to the right people at the right time. And that's not only our organizations, but also to the public at large to make sure that they know what rules they have to follow and if they need help, um, that we can help them. And collaboration, again, all of it, it's, it's kind of say repeating the same thing, but those, those four premises and principles are really, really important. Um, so what I wanted to be able to do is if there's any community partners that are on the call that want to give a quick update as to what they're doing, whether it's in regards to Earth Day or whether it's in regards to the COVID um, crisis or whether it's in preparing for the upcoming hurricane season, I will stop sharing the screen and um, open, open the floor. I think I will. <laughs> Exit. Celia, yeah, all I mentioned, um, Andy and I just finished our qualifications to become official St. John Rescue members. Oh, and wonderful. That and that included taking the FEMA National Incident Management um, System for courses. So almost everything that you presented in here, you know, was part of those courses. So, um, yeah, I'd like to talk to you more about Awesome. You know, we learned all that that's stuff, fantastic. so we know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's fantastic. Now, do you also have your ham radio license? Uh, not yet. I started not taking yet. a course and then you really need, the, they were doing a study group and I just didn't finish yeah. that yet. So that'll yeah. be next. Well, I tell you what was really, really important is after the storm, I was in the States and I wanted to fly back and the staff said, don't come back. We need you at Stateside to do some communications for us. And so I, I literally was able to connect the three islands with satellite phones, ham radios, and um, cell phones. And right. now, you know, I'm a, I'm a ham radio operator now, and I'm, and I'm studying for the um, American radio response um, teams as nice. well. So it's, nice. it's something important to have. So right. it's so good to see y'all's faces. Yeah. And I know DJ, I know, or B, DJ, hello, good to see your face. And BJ, I know that you might have wanted to say something about what um, Rotary is doing. And you are on um, mute. So um, if you can go down to the corner and click that microphone. There you go. So uh, I'm here as a realtor and as a Rotarian. And one of the things I'd, I'd like to do a shout out for the realtors, we've got 1.2 members and we were, we were really, fast off the mark on this and we got uh, we've been working to have laws relaxed and changed on the national level and the reason one of the reasons that independent contractors have been included in all of the SBA things the funding opportunities is because the realtors went in there and and just pushed as hard as they could with with our own lobbyists it's it's funny because normally we're just lobbying for home ownership uh, this time we were actually lobbying for ourselves, which is really a change for us. So that was really good. We're also getting laws changed about notary. So a notary can be can become virtual. Um, appraisals, we're getting laws relaxed on appraisals so people can continue to refinance their homes and sell their homes. So the appraisals can either be postponed or become virtual. Um, there's a lot of online learning available and, and the messages from the Realtors Association are all messages that we can take right out into the community because our reach is pretty, pretty deep. On Rotary's end, we've got 500 little peak, peak buckets, little flower pot, pots, and we've got little tablets, dirt tablets that put in them, and we've gathered a couple thousand seeds. Um, Jennifer's putting together some nice little pieces of paper, the instruction sheets to put in them. And we're going to put them all in little brown bags and staple them with rotary on the front and try our best to get them out to every child on St. John. So every child will be able to start a ginger Thomas plant, which is our territorial flower. And they grow like weeds, so it should be easy and successful. They'll learn how to plant, they'll learn how to care for a plant. And then um, they can't eat it, but they can go ahead and plant it outside and it'll be very, very pretty forever. That's what we were going to do. Rotary was going to do at the celebration today. So 
Yeah. Another way, That's we'll it. figure it out. Yep, yep, and it's, it's a good teamwork kind of thing. And one of the things that you brought up, BJ, is one of the things that I did not mention, is as we develop our website for VIVOAD, we've also established a BEOC, which is a Business Emergency Operations Center. And we already have, if you go to www.vibeoc, you will already see some links that, um, that we've been able to get started. And we will kind of transition those into the VI VOAD website. But um, again, it's a work in progress. But what we're hoping to do is, is connect and support businesses as they kind of transition through all of this and the economic hardships and everything that they'll have to go through. And we're hoping to be a support system for small businesses as well as individuals and nonprofits and faith-based organizations. So thanks, BJ. Right. Sure. Dr. Celia, do you have something to add? You're on mute. So if you want to... Um, Let me unmute myself. Yes, my dear. Yes, darling. <laughs> um, well, actually, I am one of the chair, the chairpersons for the Children and Youth Disaster Task Force, which was a task force that was started after Ir Irma Maria in 2018. Um, and it's actually now about 90 or something members. Um, the Children Task Force, the focus of it is to make sure children have a voice and the families. Um, and so it started under the auspices of Human Services. Um, with former Assistant Commissioner Janet Tomo Krieger. And when we partnered with the St. Thomas Recovery Group and UVI, it became a person unto itself. And so every week, more and more members come who believe in making sure children have a voice. Um, I've been honored to be, I was the chairperson. And when I went to UVI, I was asked to be the chairperson. And so the work I've been doing um, with Dr. Gwinnell and the team, we ended up doing a presentation at the Clinton Foundation in Puerto Rico. Um, and we also did a presentation when the Clinton Foundation came to St. Thomas last year. One of the things that we've been trying to do with the federal government is to find ways to get funding to address issues of the task force. And one of the issues, the issues are health and wellness, community engagement and education and spirituality. Um, because based on the, out, the outreach in the community, um, the children in many entities have said that faith is something that helps them cope with this, um, including schooling. And so what's interesting about this year um, is that when I came back from my trip in Europe in January, um, the task force was activated like the second week in February. And one of the focus at the time was human trafficking because the task force had begun to do sessions on St. Croix and St. Thomas to look at children being exploited in the territory and other places based on what we had heard. And because COVID-19, um, I saw it coming, it became a focus for the task force. Yeah. Um, Dr. Audrey Thomas and myself and some of the nurses who were there from Irma Maria, we worked collaboratively with Dr. Hunt and we began to educate the child care centers, um, as well as the Head Start staff about the signs and symptoms of COVID-19 before COVID-19 became the way it is now. Because I kind of felt as a team member, as a medical person, because I'm a pharmacist as well, that knowledge is power. And if you empower, if you provide families with information, the fear goes down, the anxiety goes down. And so we have been meeting and what's interesting is um, about two weeks ago, I reached out to Dr. Marilyn Benoit, who is a child psychiatrist, adolescent psychiatrist, who is also um, former vice president of Deborah Foundation from Trinidad, who came to share with the task force about how to cope where you are. And she was amazing, you know, yeah. um, looking at culture, looking at, you know, how historically we have coped in the community and how to use, um, she calls it play, art, self-mastery with families, friends, and the providers who provide the best care for the children of the Virgin Islands. 
Um, and it was funny because after she did the session, we brought her on the radio at WSDA. She did the same thing. And when she was done, she said, she said, Celia, I'm joining the task force because the work that the work that the community is doing, she said, we've never done that in Texas or in Philadelphia. Wow. It's wow. not just a disaster task force, it's a task force that deals with either man-made or natural disaster. Right. And so um, last week we had the University of the Virgin Islands um, on, as well as Dr. Um, what's her name, um, Dr. Terry, who does humanities to talk about culture and the students of UVI, talking about Can how culture and history, that was wonderful. Dr. Celia, maybe if you put in the call-in number and or the date and time of the thing into the chat box, whoever's on the call can copy and paste that and um, go into and, and join you on those calls. Because I've been on the calls pretty much the entire time that, that you've been doing them. And they are very, they are just packed with information and yeah. whether it relates to, you know, Earth Day and getting the kids involved in that, or if it's related to the hurricanes or the COVID-19, there's just so much information that you could probably have a whole nother session to, on your own to talk about all the stuff that y'all are doing. Um, well, the, and well, the, there may be people that have questions for you after I'm going to let um, um, Essence and, um, and, and Ebony um, have a have a sex a, a session just to say what they're up to, and then we can come back to you and answer some other questions, and you can fill us in on the rest. Yeah, that sounds good. But I think one of the things I want to share with the group um, before I jump off is the fact yeah. that one of the things we identify is needs in the task force, and yeah. so the two needs that came up was one, the Haitian community and the Hispanic community share with me that they their student their children don't have a lot of access to iPads. So that's a challenge for them right now in their communities of how to make sure young, their children get access to being educated. So I'm waiting for Serrano Griffith to reach out to me because I got like several calls, that's one thing. And two, Mr. Henley, who Henley shared that a lot of the seniors are still not having access to food. So I'm waiting to hear back from him. Um, so. The wonderful thing about this, the team, this particular team, is that this team expands to all other teams, trying yeah. to work together to do what needs to be done. But D, actually D as well, D Brown and Miss um, Gabrielle is also when they have time to call in, they can, especially Miss Gabrielle Anna, because it's really important that we we go where people are. Yeah. Um, and that's what I want to share with the group. But thank you so much, awesome. Celia, for inviting yeah. me, because it's a Absolutely. lot to be done, but. I thank you so much. Yes, we'll put that put that contact information in the chat box, and I can also send that. And remember too that we have the VIBO ad, the last um, the full membership call, the last Friday of the month. So that's going to be this Friday. So if you've got an email from me about the the Zoom call, I should have also have you on the list for the um, the VIBO ad, and that's where we can fill in some of those needs. And that's what VIBO ad. Like Dial a Ride, um, St. John Community Foundation, My Brother's Workshop, Catholic Charities, they're all feeding people. Now we just need to make sure that nobody is getting drunk through the cracks as the, and, and not duplicating. So that's that whole coordination piece that, that, that we're talking about. And that's a good, good, good segue into you, um, Ebony, and um, some of the stuff and the support system that you and the other FEMA VALs offer us not only just the VOAD members, but also the territory as a whole. Um, if you want to give a little shout out as to some of the stuff you do, I know that we've got um, le about 15 minutes left um, and then we'll um, work our way back to questions. Ah, I don't hear you. Oh, it's on your earphones maybe? Maybe it has something to do with, oh yes, now we can hear you. Okay, excellent. Well, um, I won't take up much time, but basically on the vow part, you did, uh, that was a great segue. As a voluntary agency liaison, we are part of many of the conference calls in the territory to make sure that no one's really falling through the cracks, there's not duplication of benefits. So we keep our ears on the ground and also in reference to um, needs in the community so that we can report it up. 
we at this time are also dealing with the um, surge capacity of the hospitals and helping with that um, situation there as well. So that's um, all I have for now. I won't take all up right. all the time. All right. Well, I do want to thank you again for all the work that y'all as FEMA vows have done for us since the hurricane. And I mean, help as far as helping with the community response plans and setting up community meetings and interacting with people and interacting with the faith groups. So we couldn't have done this without y'all and I appreciate y'all being a part of this. Celia, Celia, we also have Naomi from the St. Croix uh, FEMA. Uh, awesome. Val as well. She was on the phone and I think she was trying to unmute. So I just wanted to make sure she had a chance to add anything that if she wanted okay. to. All right. Naomi, if you are there and can say anything. And in the meantime, Essence from St. Croix, how are you? I am doing well. How are you, Celia? Very good. Very good. I'm so glad we have St. Croix in the house. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we want to listen in. We want to hear what's going on. Um, I don't really have much updates to share on our end. Um, one thing we are doing um, is we have um, been contacted by our farmers um, that were granted the farm tiendas, and some of them are um, using those as a mechanism for uh, distributing food. So we are looking at uh, ways just to make sure that our senior population and our um, handicapped uh, population are being addressed and served during this time um, due to the spacing limitations with Vitran and um, as well just their ability just to get out of the house, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a, that's a great Earth Day um, shout out to one of the programs that y'all do. And one of the other things that I want to give y'all a big shout out for is your nonprofit consortium, um, which is kind of what um, we were working on as far as the Angel Networks, trying to get the nonprofits on St. John working together. And now what I'm ex so excited about facilitating is expanding that and now getting all the St. John and all the St. Thomas and all the St. Croix organizations working together. And whether we sorted out D um, with Community Foundation of the Virgin Islands, and I had talked about breaking that out by impact areas so we can have the larger conversation. And when we have a conversation about environment or energy, that we have all the people from all the territory um, that at that table for those discussions. Because again, together we will we will have better better brain power. Um, so good job on your nonprofit consortium as well. And we'll. We'll definitely be in touch on a regular basis. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. And I want to give DJ a shout out. I have so enjoyed working with DJ over on some of the disaster case management stuff. I just didn't know if you had anything to add, DJ, about um, you know some of the things that you've seen as needs and some of the things that we should keep our eye out on or on a whole different track as far as some of the Earth Day um, activities that you see or see a need for. Are you muted or I can muted? hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, I just I just have to say full disclosure my my feed is really choppy. I'm not hearing everyone very clearly. Um and I appreciate everyone's um participation and uh hello Dr. Victor, long time to see. Uh, good to see everyone else. Um, but I will say that uh, in lieu of all that's happening, um, I do have a special interest in a, a specific focus on breastfeeding mothers right now in this territory with COVID-19. Um, I know that uh, we are having a challenge with our uh, mothers in territory and whether or not it is safe to breastfeed during this uh, pandemic. So I will say that I am continuing to plug into the concerns with local pediatricians, pharmacists, as well as uh, breastfeeding mothers and their support systems as to how to keep our young ones healthy and thriving in the midst of the pandemic. So I, I do say that in terms of Earth Day and thinking of our youngest, most vulnerable population, it is at the forefront of what I'm thinking about right now, but I am considering all that has been discussed in this particular conversation. 
Um, I will have to kind of touch base with everyone as, as I mentioned at the forefront of this, my feet has been very choppy and I've missed a lot of this, but I will get uh, with uh, Celia, Dr. Victor and uh, Todd in terms of doing you know, some of the information that I did not hear, so I apologize. Awesome, well, it's great to see you and um, look forward to getting any kind of communication together. It's, it's all, always good to be with you, yay. So that, that gives us that we're at 446, which is good timing. If there's any questions that anybody has, we would love to field them. And um, if anybody else has anything to add or feel like they need to share anything else, that'd be awesome. Dee, do you and Anna, I mean, I know you guys have your hands in so many things. Um, and again, just kind of like Dr. Celia could probably have a whole session yourselves. Mm -hmm. Is there something um, that you would like to feature um, some of so many of the things that you promote and, and support. Well, I, I guess from our perspective, we just, you know, were excited to be part of something which was celebrating Earth Day. It's a, yeah. it's a really nice opportunity to get to, to meet Todd. Um, it's uh, someday maybe face to face and to see a lot of um, other old friends or long friends who have um, been working with us in so many different ways. Um, you know, but it's also the, I think that um, CFEI's commitment to children, youth, and families in the territory was always our driving consideration. And so much of that really ties back to protecting and preserving our environment yeah. and supporting um, activities that can involve families and classes in really um, doing things like gardens or um, working in the national park. So, I mean, it's, it's all so connected. And I think sometimes yeah. the environmental focus gets um, diluted because basically it's such an important part of all the other um, efforts for children, youth and families. So I just kind of, you know, we, we did our, our posting this morning of um, particularly in the last three years, we've had an opportunity to support a number of different environmental efforts throughout the territory. And um, honestly, that's, that's as much fun as it gets to be. So that's been kind of, you know, we've been parts of tree plantings and, and path restorations and building trails and um, helping with uh, recycling. And, you know, it's just, it's all, it's all part of what we're all committed to as far as building forward a community and a, and a Virgin Islands, which is so much better for us than it was three years ago. And I just also get, Celia, with being in those meetings on the, uh, every morning, I just get the sense that we, we're really pulling together as a territorial team and we're really all, um, seeing this uh, virus crisis as an opportunity to really continue to build forward better than we were. So, um, so Earth Day, 50 years, yay. yay. Boad, 50 years, yay. <laughs> um, but we're, we're really, we're excited to, to know about this call. Absolutely, and one of the things that, um, that Community Foundation of the Virgin Islands did as, as director of the Community Foundation, the, the, the Community Foundation of the Virgin Islands funneled a lot of money um, right after the storm and for the years after the storm, just specific projects. And one of the things that we may have shifted over the, when we talked about setting up the BEOC, which is the Business Emergency Operations Center, that is going to also be a part of the Business Alliance of St. John's because as you know, we don't really have a strong chamber just on St. John and we wanted to do something so the businesses of St. John have a, have a voice for all the tax money that they put into the pot. And you know, they've got some def definite um, ideas on how that should be spent for community planning and some of those kind of things. Uh, and one of the things related to Earth Day was um, the green stamp program. And I don't know, I, I can tell by the ages on some of us that we all know what the S&H green stamps were back in the day. Yay! <laughs> all the little books in the stamp. But um, so this green stamp, what we're trying to do is we've got a list of everything that businesses can and should do to preserve paradise as far as that, that's a, a, a waste management authority kind of um, 
tagline. Um, but it's to, to do things like changing out light bulbs, making sure re you're recycling cans and what you can do, um, and some of the other things. And then the, you would get a stamp in your window, and then on the website, we would promote that business as being um, environmentally friendly, and you should support those businesses. So that's just, you know, it's a good way to segue from all the work that is being done by the people at this in this, in this little window, but also all the work that um, Dee and Anna and Community Foundation of the Virgin Islands supports. And, and then back again to Todd and um, Tonya and Jennifer and Paula and everybody on the Friends of the National Park team. Um, again, it, it's just an amazing group of people working together and I'm honored to be a part of it. If y'all can lean on me for any kind of support, I'm here for you. And, um, and if y'all haven't gotten in a membership form, you know, contact me and um, I will get you one. And I'm gonna pass it over and pen, unless there's any other questions or comments. I'll turn it back over to Jennifer and Todd. Well, this is great. Thank you, Celia. Uh, thank you, Dee and, and others. It's great to it's great to meet you. Uh, from the Friends perspective, um, you know, our mission is about the national park, and a big part of what what we're focused on is is how do we better connect the park to the community and the community to the park. Um, and so, you know, I think this is a great conversation that is about sustainability of an island community. And, and we're, you know, we're proud to be part of that, um, but we're, you know, we're just a part and the work that you all do is so important. So we're thrilled to have you here today and uh, thrilled to learn about uh, all the great programs and and uh, and how it, it meshes in and how we can help. So. Um, if there's no other questions uh, for Celia, I just want to say thank you again to everybody, uh, Celia, especially for your time putting this together, and um, and happy Earth Day, and look forward to to hopefully not having to get together next time in a crisis situation, but uh, ongoing uh, proactive conversation. So uh, so thanks everybody. And thank Celia. you too. All right. Happy Bye. Earth Day. Bye. Uh, take care. Happy Bye. Day, thank everybody. you, guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> oh, gosh.